Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kalispell Warhawks Dynasty. Today we're finally talking recruiting here in season number 4. We have put together a good start to this year, we're 3-0. But how are we looking as far as the future goes? We graduated a good group of our core last season, and the same is going to happen at the end of this year. And I'm talking about the original Warhawks. We've seen new players enter like Ja'Cory Day and Roscoe Sheridan. They're obviously big pieces of the future still. But today we're going to talk about players that could potentially join them as Kalispell Warhawks. So once again, Blackjack has joined me here to put together a recruiting special. He found a number of prospects for us to go after, and after we finish his long portion of the video, it is about 20 minutes long, we'll dive into our actual recruiting board and see how things are looking. So let's see what Blackjack has for us here in Season 4. Alright, the 2020 Kalispell Warhawks recruiting class, and who we're looking to target this year. Now, we've already talked a little bit about some of these prospects uh, from last year and two years ago. So let's go ahead and start right away with the quarterbacks, as this could be a very important year. Marquise Walker graduates this year. J.R. Battle will be a junior next year. And there's a, definitely a hole right now. There is some uncertainty about what we can do with the quarterback position, and there are two quarterback prospects out there that we know of who can possibly fill that role in Taquan Layton and Sidney Jean Charles. Now, there were going to be some things that I was looking to do mid-season during Season 3 to go ahead and get guys a little bit more familiar with both quarterbacks, but then Taquan got a lot more attention, and a lot of attention fell off of Sidney. So much to the point that this year, Taekwon is actually the number one quarterback in the nation. He got to go to the Elite 11 camp where I thought Sydney would be. And it turns out instead, Sydney has fallen all the way to 47th in terms of quarterbacks in the nation this year. Uh, now, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that they're maybe a little bit closer than most are giving credit to Sydney and maybe over crediting uh, Leighton a bit. I thought Taekwon would be at number five. Maybe you get uh, John Charles to sneak in at 11. But let's go ahead and break down the two of them and see what people were seeing in Taekwon and why he's so high and perhaps why Sydney is so low. The first thing that most scouts have noticed right away with Taekwon is the poise and the accuracy that he has. Despite all the speed that he has, he's very comfortable in the pocket. Now, you can see the speed here. Read option. They bite on the running back. He breaks it outside. And look at the secondary. Just struggle to try to keep up with him. He, only, he almost goes and scores on that play. And then here they go quads right, pump fake right, throw back left. Good on the money ball. Touchdown. You get to see a little bit of the throw power there. Now, I don't think he has a stronger arm than Sydney per se, but again, it's the delivery and the accuracy. Look there, poise in the pocket, another shot at it from his perspective. Good deep ball, gets it there. If the wide receiver has a little bit more speed, that's a touchdown. Let's watch Taquan here again. Another good deep ball, but this time he understands that the safety is on the inside and watch where he delivers this ball. He delivers it to the receiver's right-hand side so that he doesn't end up in trouble. He likes keeping the wide receivers nice and safe. Timing, absolutely on point. As you see there, waits for the wide receiver to make his break before he throws. And then watch the poise here. When he does need to run, he runs through the pocket, sees where the open gap is, and you see him get to the outside there. Good spin move, gets into the end zone. Watch it here again, another angle, spins away from that DB and gets into the end zone untouched. Again, look at this. Good timing route. He keeps his wide receivers safe. He makes sure that when they come off that break, that they're able to go ahead and get yards after the catch. Very, very smart. Watch Leighton here again. Good poise in the pocket. Feels the pressure. Just runs straight up the middle. Slides down. Gets the first down, and the yard is there. Here we go again. Look at the pocket presence. Good throw over the middle. He knows that he has the safety split. With that wide receiver coming straight up the seam, he has to deliver that ball, immediately does so, touchdown. Now watch here again as now he's playing Palmetto. Good throw here over the middle. Now watch here, play action. Look at that, poise in the pocket, good delivery. He never looks rattled. Here we go again, sees the hole, goes, runs straight up the middle, slides down before he gets hit. Now he almost gets hit there by a very good linebacker who we'll get back to in a minute. And then watch the deep ball here. 
good, good touch pass there. Back in the end zone. Touchdown. You have to see it here. It's a halfback wheel. Watch the running back. Just finally get past that corner there. Back of the end zone touchdown. Good throw, good location. I love what I see from Layton, and there's a good, good reason why they have him ranked that high. Now, I don't think he should be that high, but because he's that high, I don't think we actually have a shot at him anymore. I thought we would have, but here we are. We're talking about now having to maybe settle for Sidney John Charles. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what he brings to the table. So one of the things that popped out to me last year was this one particular play when I was doing the recruiting video, Kalispell at home, this deep ball here, where he just is rolling out right and just rifles one straight to the receiver, about 40 yards on the run. I, I thought it was an absolute money throw, and he's still making throws like that this year. Now, the issues and the problems that I see with Sydney is I mean even here where he goes ahead and he gets away and he has the ability to do that he'll shake off some sacks is that when he does finally get to the outside and he's delivering some of these deep bombs he's leaving his wide receivers out the dry on some of these plays I mean you can see the arm strength and everything there he's a hero when he's on the field but the problem is that some of his heroism uh, tends to leave his wide receivers in deep trouble there you can see some of the inaccuracy problems problems missing the receiver there on the sideline there is actually a good throw but the pocket presence isn't there he does best when he's actually standing in the pocket and delivering but he likes to rely on going to the outside a little too much here here he does keep it psycho Sid goes ahead makes a little juke inside dives into the end zone touchdown so you can see that yes the athleticism all the physical ability is there for him to play the quarterback position. There just needs to be a little bit more poise. There, another throw. He's at about the 35-yard line, throwing a deep ball out to his brother, Hayden. Watch it here again, getting to the outside, back from about the 30-yard line, delivers it to about the 15 on the other side. Hayden gets in for the touchdown. So when the play breaks down, he's very good, which I think makes him a great fit for someone like Ja'Cory Day. Watch here again, rolling out left, having to throw across his body, and the wide receiver there holds on to him. But that's in pretty tight coverage. I think at the next level, that's a dangerous throw. Here's a very good throw here. Watch it again. He's actually delivering this before the wide receiver breaks. See, that throw was made right there. But when the wide receiver is still about a yard behind the corner, and he hasn't quite gotten that step yet, but he delivers it and throws it over just enough uh, for the wide receiver to go ahead and accelerate and make that play. Here we go again. Good loft pass there to the outside. He's not afraid to go ahead and take some contact and hang in there if it means the wide receiver is getting open. There you go. That timing route there. See, when he's in the pocket and he stays there and delivers this, as he does here again, bam, these throws are on the money, even though the wide receiver drops it here. But watch, again, the timing. The receiver hasn't broken yet, hasn't gotten a step. But Sidney is still delivering that ball ahead of time because he knows that the wide receiver is going to get that step. He puts it over. Look at this, right in the bread basket. That is a money throw. And that's where I see the ability in him. But wide receiver drops the pass. But I don't put that one on Sidney. I thought that one was an excellent one there. And then here you go, again, from the pocket, delivering straight over the middle to his brother, Hayden. Here you go again. Hayden's been his favorite target thus far this year, and Hayden is actually looking way better at the tight end position than as a blocker. And again, look at this arm strength. I mean, are, are you kidding me? On the run from about the 40-yard line, and he's throwing this to the back of the end zone. This is about a 65, 70-yard bomb. Look at the old, it's an insane throw. And so much so the wide receiver has to essentially turn around, backpedal into the end zone. And he has fun when he's out there. He likes to show off a little bit as you see him kind of hurl into the end zone there, kind of doing a little uh, jump step. And then again, back of the end zone throw on the run. I think that he definitely has the tools to be a great quarterback. If we train him to kind of sit down a little bit and be a little bit more comfortable in the pocket. But if we're able to snag him up, he's an absolute special talent a game changer with an incredible arm. I mean, you think J.R. Battle has an arm? Wait until you see him on the field. He'll make some plays, and I think that if we're able to get him in, he's going to be the quarterback that we've been waiting for for quite some time.
Remember what I said, we'll be back at Spokane again to go ahead and talk about Reno Springs, the running back. Well, he's in his senior year now, and he looks about as good as he did, uh, even a little bit better. Now, he doesn't have the speed that Ja'Cory Day has, but he does a great job of getting the outside. He's gotten a little taller. He's at 6'1", kind of a wiry frame. He can receive out of the backfield. He can receive in the slot. And he's got some nice elusiveness and some good moves to him. I think that he could be a good complement to someone like Roscoe Sheridan, a little speedier, uh, a little more agility, good change of pace, whereas Roscoe can be a little bit more of a power runner, break more tackles. Uh, I think they could make an interesting combination together. You could have him go ahead and be more of a receiving back. Uh, be interesting to see what you do with them and if we can go ahead and get a little aggressive with them. I think he's ranked in about the 20s for running backs this year, so there's definitely a shot. And I think putting him together with uh, Sheridan and Day as a combination would be excellent going into the next two years. Now, as I mentioned when I was talking and discussing Taquan Layton, there's a middle linebacker down there in Florida who I wanted us to take a look at, but turns out he's a lot better than I thought and is going to be a little out of our range. His name is Alonzo Spates, a very aggressive, very hard-hitting middle linebacker. Uh, he's made up a lot of ground in tackling for Palmetto this year. He's currently at 50 tackles on the year in only four games thus far. He's gotten seven sacks. He's going to be an outstanding linebacker at the next level. Not sure where he's going, but he's off our radar. I don't think we have a shot at him. But I'm still trying to go ahead and look for linebackers for us to go ahead and help revamp this defense. So off to Ohio I went to go ahead and see what we can find. He wanted me to go there and kind of explore the Midwest a little bit. So I figured, why not Ohio? So I found two high schools of interest to me, Hartsfield Prep, which is nearby Columbus, Ohio, and Evanston High, which is nearby Cincinnati. The interesting thing about Hartsfield Prep is that they actually take students from all across the state, and they're a prep school slash boarding school, which means that the kids that are outside of Columbus usually will go ahead and pay a little extra in tuition to stay at the school, but they end up usually being able to build a lot of uh, great linebackers and great defensive players there because they're taking kids from all over and bringing them in whether they're on scholarship or paying that extra to do so so I looked there and there were three interesting prospects that I thought uh, would be at least a decent fit here uh, there's one that I thought we definitely had a shot at Bobby McMullen hard-hitting corner a very very good tackler and I thought that would be a great fit at Kalispell though it seems like we're kind of losing in that race uh, maybe there's a shot for us to get back. There's Bryce Kalkbrenner, the defensive tackle who actually plays for Evanston alongside Xavier Bozeman, who I thought were two guys we definitely had a shot at. Uh, Xavier seems like he, we're still in the race for. Bryce, I'm not sure anymore. We're just really struggling with defensive tackles, and I'm not sure why. And then also there at Hartsville Prep is Skylar Blo uh, Bloomquist and Gunnar Detheridge. Uh, Gunner, I think we have no shot at whatsoever as he's the number five middle linebacker in the nation. But Skyler, I think we might as he's the number 67 outside linebacker. But from what I've seen from him, he actually made a few more plays than Gunner and seemed very comfortable in coverage. Let's see if we can go ahead and make a play for him. So since I was out there in the Midwest, uh, like I did last year, I stopped at another Midwest state. Uh, instead of Minnesota this time, I went to Indiana and found a very interesting and special prospect out there, Scott Case from Wabash, Indiana. The footage that I got from him at the game that I saw from him, he was absolutely outstanding. He's a scrapper, a fighter. When he jams wide receivers at the line, he had three interceptions in this game. He's a very good tackler, a hard hitter, and he seems a, a bit like a ball hawk too. Uh, he does very, very well in coverage. Uh, look here, just jamming the receiver at the line, coming in, making a tackle. He's got a nose for the football. Love the way he plays. Watch here again. He understands his zone, and he baits that quarterback as he steps back to kind of give the receiver space and allows the under to go ahead and break and pick off that pass. And here again, look at that athleticism as he jumps up for that ball, takes it away outstanding prospect I don't know if we'll have a shot at him but I think that he's a special kid um, let's go ahead and make the best effort that we can to try to get him and see him away from Indiana not sure if we need more edge rushers but uh, we may want to keep an eye on this guy because he may be coming into our conference a guy by the name of Landon Shanky 
He is one of the top rated defensive ends in the country. He's from Provo, Utah. Uh, he is a monster. He a great size too at a 6'4", 245 pounds. Yeah, he is a problem. Watch here on this play. He just absolutely knocks the left tackle uh, right on his butt and then strip sacks the quarterback and his uh, defender goes ahead, picks it up, runs it to the end zone. Next play, they actually run a design away from him and he still almost gets to the quarterback. The halfback had to go there and pick him up, uh, but he is an absolute havoc for offensive lines. They have to sit there and chop block him, do whatever they can to try to, or go low on him, do whatever they can to try to take him out of a play. He is a special playmaker and he could very well end up in the Mountain West Conference. We need to keep an eye on him, see where he goes, because uh, if our offensive line is not ready, he's going to cause havoc. We've already seen what Cal has done to us, even Rafa Leao Oneone. Again, one of my favorite prospects from last year got a sack on us uh, in the game against Cal. So imagine what he can do to us if he's in the Mountain West. Speaking of Rafa, I actually stopped by his old high school again, Lincoln High, and I got to see the number one wide receiver in the nation. His name is Terrell Corville. Now, Terrell does not have the same build as Centarius Phillips last year's 6'4", huge body, more physical receiver. He has more agility, a smaller frame at 6'1", 180, but man, he is a dynamic playmaker, and he's a great route runner, uh, and no, no doubt in my mind why he's the number one receiver. Watch him here, deep ball, can go up and get it. He absolutely fights for the ball. He gets off the line very well, fights through jams. And he has great agility, great quickness. Watch here. This is my favorite play. Look at this jump ball here. Goes and gets it and takes the contact. And despite getting whacked like that, still comes down with the ball, hangs on with it with one hand, touchdown. He actually scored five in that game. I think he's going to be very special. Uh, we don't have a shot at him, but again, have to keep an eye on who some of the best talent in the nation is. Also in this game was Caden Sweezy. Now, if you remember last year, we went and took a look at Chad Sweezy at tight end. He ended up at BYU, so we'll probably end up playing him next year. But I thought, okay, let's go back again and maybe take a shot at Caden because he'll end up being an offensive lineman next year. Um, he did play a lot of offensive linemen last year, but now they've kind of transitioned him over to tight end, fullback. He does a lot. He actually plays a lot of different roles, and I think he could be an interesting hybrid, hybrid player for us. Now, because he's shown that versatility, there may be a lot more attention going away, uh, going away from us and instead going to other programs, even though we have a bit of a presence there since we did recruit and try to go after his brother. But again, his versatility is what makes him interesting. He can play the tight end role. He can line up a little bit as a slot guy uh, and, and go to the outside too. Watch here, good crossing pattern over the middle. It makes the catch, shows some soft hands. Watch him here at tackle, blocking. And you can see him, he can hold up defensive ends, defensive tackles, doesn't matter. He has great hands, he can stay in front and say in front of guys, does a great job pass blocking, run blocking. Watch here on this play as he plays fullback. He actually hits this guy so hard, he actually throws him into his own runner. We don't want to see that. We want to see more plays like this, where he's clearing space for the runner here in the end around, and he gets into the end zone there. So I think Caden Sweezy is a very interesting guy. Don't know if we'll have a shot at him. I say again, let's go ahead and try to hit hard in recruiting to see if we can pick him up. And if we do, we have a very special player on our hands. And if all else fails, we can always come back home and try to steal whatever talent we have around here. Uh, starting with halfback Kirk Norfolk, who is very, very low. I mean, again, he's out here in Montana, so not a lot of uh, pros uh, recruiters are going to be looking at him. Uh, so we have him ranked really low as a one star. I actually think he might be a bit of a steal as a two or possibly a three star. A decent power runner, wants to stay at home. Hey, we're the only Division I program here in Montana. Let's go ahead and try to pick him up and add to that backfield. We're really, really lacking there. Um, if we miss out on Reno Springs, I think Kirk Norfolk um, is probably the best option that we have on the board. And then there's also quarterback Justin Colbert from Polson, Montana, just about an hour south from here. Now, with Justin Colbert, I think you run into a little bit of the JR battle problem where he's a pocket passer, not great speed, although he does have, he can run a bit. Um, he's more of a pocket passer. Good arm, decent accuracy, uh, and he actually kind of gave uh, Sidney Jean Charles a little bit of his money 
a little run for his money in terms of who the best quarterback in the state was. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that unlike Sydney, when he's on the run, he doesn't throw very well. Um, as you saw there, that little inaccurate throw to the outside there. But when he's in the pocket and he's got a nice clean pocket, he can deliver a good solid accurate pass so you know if Sydney fails I think he's a good backup plan let's go ahead and go after him and see what we can do there's also Sterling Marzalek the defensive tackle who plays for Kalispell High uh, alongside Sydney John Charles but again we really do have trouble recruiting at the defensive tackle position he's looking for pro potential and program tradition which of course we don't offer right now and I mean, I thought that maybe the need to stay close to home would have helped a little, uh, helped us out a little bit there. But instead, he's looking at UNC, Pitt, and Utah, and we're six on his list. So I don't know. See what you can do there with him. If you can bring him in, hey, at least we finally have recruited a defensive tackle. If not, best of luck to you. That's all I've got for this year. No real big names on the horizon for next year other than, I guess, Hayden John Charles, a tight end. I don't see any quarterbacks coming up that could be big names and uh, someone that we can possibly go after going into this year. I'll have to look a little bit deeper into the pipeline states. I thought we were fine at wide receiver with the emergence of Amante Jones, who I thought has been excellent, as well as Ja'Cory Day. So I'm going to go ahead and keep looking, maybe a little bit more on the defensive side. We'll see what's there, but we'll talk about that leading into next year. All right, plenty of good stuff there from Blackjack, and we'll get to our board in just a moment. I just don't want to gloss over the fact that now we have a major selling point in our program. Grinding our way from the bottom of the Mountain West Conference all the way to becoming conference champions last year is not lost on players. They see what Coach Leon Daniels has done in a short time, both in terms of team success and individual success, and that's going to draw a lot of attention from players that want a coach that can really help develop their talents. So let's get to the actual recruiting board now and we'll open with the quarterback position. To our surprise this year, Sidney John Charles had some serious competition from his home state and we have done a great job so far in recruiting Justin Colbert. We have the only scholarship offered to him and it looks like he's going to be committing very soon. You can definitely compare him to JR Battle, but I'd say coming out of high school, Colbert is the more polished quarterback. Now, Sidney John Charles we are still pursuing, but so is the University of Minnesota. It is now a two-team race. So does Sid want to stick home, potentially battle for the starting job, or does he want to go to a larger Division I program and play in the Big Ten? I think Sidney has a lot of potential. Early on in his career, things might be shaky as he grows into a more polished quarterback and a little bit more structured in his play. But after a while, I think he has a very high ceiling. And we'll see where this battle goes. Now, it would have been awesome to be in the race for Taquan Layton, but that just wasn't going to happen. He is the number one quarterback from the state of Florida. So you know that every big program is going to want him. I think he's actually very comparable to Marquise Walker, but a better passer. Not a very strong arm, but more accurate than Marquise, and it looks like FSU is his most likely destination. Now a couple players who have already committed to schools are Jamie Kiloha from Hawaii. He is going to San Jose State. He's a big strong guard who needs some time to polish his play. And also Caden Sweezy. We went for another Sweezy brother who did not want to come to Kalispell. He's going to Cal instead. I really wanted the player of his versatility, but he will be going to Berkeley. Now, Blackjack found a variety of intriguing players across the country, but sadly, most of them just did not have interest in us. We're working on trying to get Ohio as a Midwest pipeline state, but that has been a big challenge. And you can see just how poorly these recruiting battles have gone for Colt Brunner, McMullen, Bloomquist. And for some reason, we still can't recruit defensive tackles well. Even Sterling Marzalek from Kalispell, number 106 ranked, and still he's favoring Utah over us. I don't know what it is about these defensive tackles. I thought Landon Shanky was a reach for us, and he's favoring larger schools. Gunner Deathridge could be headed to Purdue. Alonzo Spates turned out to be very good, and he is looking at Ole Miss and South Carolina. I really liked both Scott Case and Bobby McMullen at cornerback, just because they had very good tackling ability and were good in coverage. 
but teams have been so aggressive in the same recruiting battles that we're in. I thought we performed better in these races after a great season last year. Here's Dwayne Baker from Virginia, thought he'd be a nice compliment to Roscoe Sheridan, but unfortunately, we are losing this battle as well. But there is good news still in recruiting, had to get the bad stuff out of the way. Let's go to Vermont. We are really trying to get these pass rushers, and Luke Young stands at 6'7", 265 pounds. He's not very fast, but he is strong. Even at 265, I think he could be an interesting defensive tackle, especially after a couple years of development. His overall skill set's a little awkward, so not much interest so far. This might be advantageous for us. Then Xavier Bozeman from Ohio, as we could actually land a prospect from that state. He is a coverage linebacker and a good tackler, but I'm really worried about his ability to get off blocks. He's the kind of linebacker you have to keep clean, or he's not going to make a big impact in the play. Then Oscar Bryant, a cornerback from Washington, which is a key state in recruiting for us this year. We don't want to lose that pipeline as we're graduating six players from the state of Washington. Then in Billings, former teammate of Amante Jones, Kirk Norfolk, who had almost no interest. He's a one-star prospect, but he's still on the radar of Wyoming and, of course, us. He's not a dynamic player, but I think that there's definitely a role for him being a power running specialist, but there are injury concerns. Back to the state of Washington, outside linebacker Titus Graves, just a two-star prospect, not very fast or agile. I think best case with him, you get a strong side linebacker that is primarily used in run defense. I want to emphasize doing a better job of getting offensive linemen developed in this program. So Donald Pollard is on our radar from California. He is a good pass blocker, but he needs to work on his strength and his run blocking. Blackjack told us about Reno Springs, a player I really like. He's a four-star running back. Washington State has a lot of interest in him, and we actually fit the profile of what he's looking for in a school. Now, it's going to be tough for us to stay in this race, but we are going to go aggressive because he and Sheridan could be an awesome one-two punch. Not to mention, he was teammates in high school with Ja'Cory Day. He has two offers right now, and he'll be visiting us in our next game. That's a chance to show what uh, this program's about. Another battle here for a defensive end against Colorado for Chad Moore, who has a really balanced skill set and I think has a high ceiling. And we're actually going after a five-star wide receiver, Freddie Kimbrough. But there is some bad news. I don't think he's actually a five-star talent. I think he's more of a three. He's not overly fast or athletic, doesn't have great hands, doesn't run great routes, doesn't offer much in yards after catch, and he's injury prone. But still, I think he's the kind of player that could develop into a reliable starter. We're also going after a one-star tight end from California, Oscar Williams, as we try to improve tight end depth. He is a pure receiver with some yard after catch potential. I don't think he's really a one-star player, maybe two, borderline three. Nonetheless, I think that he could develop into a good receiving tight end. Those are all the players I wanted to go through today. The big surprise was still Justin Colbert, who is a great quarterback prospect that teams are overlooking. So I'm very confident we're going to come away with at least one potential starter for the future. And from there, I actually have a lot of thoughts about the future of this team. If we end up only getting Colbert and Sidney John Charles goes to Minnesota, we are going to have to get serious about turning this into a more pocket pass oriented offense because JR Battle would be the likely starter next year. And from there, the best quarterback to run the Marquise Walker version of the offense would be Brett Mitchell. And I don't know if he has that full time starting potential. So if that's the situation we fall in, we now have to focus on building a vertical offense, which we are getting the talent to do so, but it's further going to emphasize our need to get offensive linemen in this program. However, if we do get Sidney John Charles, then we're going to have our options open. I like having options, but I have to prepare for both potential realities. So we'll just have to see how does recruiting go this year and what is the quarterback situation for Kalispell after season number four. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Still a lot of football to be played this year for your undefeated Warhawks. I'm looking forward to getting into Mountain West play the next episode against UNLV. Thanks for watching the video. Please leave your thoughts below in the comments on which prospects you like most for Kalispell this year. 
please drop a like on the video check out blackjack's channel he does an amazing job and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for the Kalispell Warhawks Dynasty. Thanks again, everybody. See you next time. Have a great day.